John chapter 20. Tunasoma kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 12 au 3. Read a little bit here and then we want to I want to read a little bit from 1 Corinthians this morning. Hapa tunasoma kidogo tena tutaenda kwa Korinto. But I want us to pray before we do this. Na kabla tutaenda kwa neno tutaenda kwa Because I think what God would want for us this morning. Sababu na jili la ambayo Mungu anataka kwetu is for us to experience the fullness of the resurrection in our life. Na ile ambayo Mungu anataka sisi tuelewe umuhimu wa ufufuko ndani ya maisha yetu. In other words, we don't just want to be uh, people that live ordinary lives. We have a risen savior. Tusikue watu ambao tunaita tu maisha maisha ya kawaida kipindi tuko na mokozi. So we want to pray this morning that God would speak to us. Leo tutaomba ili Mungu aongee na sisi. And we would understand the fullness of the resurrection. Leo tutaongelea umuhimu wa ufufuko lives in the power of the resurrection. Let us pray this morning. Father, we have come this morning. We have sung and we have danced and we have worshiped. And now we come, Lord, to look and study open our hearts to your word. Father, there is nothing we could see or nothing we could say that has the power that your word has. Your word is living. It is active. And it is sharp to change our heart. And so Father, this morning I pray that through the power of your word You would change our lives and give us hope. Father, we thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we pray this morning, Lord, that you would stir our heart, would quicken our heart, would open our eyes to living in the power of the resurrection. Father, we thank you. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 20. Yohana sura ya 20 sura ya 22 Yohana injili starting in verse 1 kwanza mstari wa kwanza Yohana injili 20 kwanza mstari wa kwanza Now on the first day of the week Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb hata siku ya kwanza ya juma Mariamu Madalena alikwenda kaburini alfajiri kungali giza bado akaliona lile jiwe limeondolewa kaburini Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him basi akaenda mbio akafika kwa Simoni Petro na kwa yule mwanafunzi mwingine ambaye Yesu alimpenda akamwambia wamemondoa bwana kaburini wala hatujui walivyomweka two weeks ago i taught on the resurrection of lazarus na jua wiki mbili zilizopita tulikuwa tunaongelea ufufuko wa Lazaro and in that story jesus said these words kwa hiyo historia hii kwa Lazaro yesu alisema hilo neno he said that our friend lazarus has fallen asleep he has died but i am going to wake him up yesu alisema na jua ndugu Lazaro amelala usingizi na mimi nitaenda kumfufua au kumwamsha. Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus and he raised him from the dead. Yesu alienda katika kaburi la Lazaro na akamfufua kutoka katika hapo. Remember because of that a lot of Jews began coming to the Lord. Na hiyo ilikuwa sababu wayahudi wa wayahudi wengi kwa jamda huo walianza kuja kwa Mungu. If you remember the Jewish people they had another reason for coming to Jesus. Na kama tulivyosema wayahudi walikuwa na chaba lingine ya kupenda kuja kwa Yesu. They wanted to live their life in humility and humbleness. They wanted power. 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 
Na wakaanza kusema labda matumaini yote Wasema oh wewe mtume wetu wote unatumainia leo ameweka kwa msalaba matumaini imeishia hapo Na jana zetu kuna hata watu wengi kati yetu wao wanawaza mawazo kama hayo The hope for the life that I wanted, the hope for the life that would give me joy is is gone. I have to And if that is you this morning, I want you to know these people in these story, they felt what you felt. And I want you to look. Peter, verse 3. Peter went therefore out to the tomb. Verse 3. And so Peter and this other disciple, we believe this was John. Na Petro na huko anafunzi mwingine ambaye yeye alikuwa anampenda sana tunaamini kama alikuwa ni Yohana. Verse 4 so they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Wakaenda mbio wote wawili na yule mwanafunzi mwingine akaenda mbio upenzi kuliko Petro. Now we don't know a lot about what Peter looked like, but maybe Peter was heavy. I don't know, but it's kind of funny that they put it in there. The Bible says John was faster than Peter. So John got to the tomb first. Now you want you to know something. Look at verse 5 for a minute. What verse 5 does is sometimes in the Bible there are little details. Kwenye mstari wa 5 hata niwaambie kwenye Biblia huwa kuna kuwa ma And those details, they may not mean anything to us, but they meant something to the people that were there. Lakini wao kusema hiyo alivyo, labda kwetu haitakuwa na maana zaidi, lakini ilikuwa na maana kwa wale watu walikuwa hapo walikuwa hicho kipindi. And verse 5 begins talking about what John saw when he got to the tomb. Mstari wa 5 anasema kipindi anza eh Yohana alifika pale kaburini. And he said this verse 5 and he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying there yet he did not go in so when john got there he looks in the graveside of jesus there's no body there he sees the Aliona tu zile sanda vitambaa tu vimekuwa kwenye kaburi. Ile mambo ambayo mufu anazikwa nayo ndio ambayo aliona pale kwenye kaburi. Verse 6. Sasa wa sita. Finally Simon Peter came. Basi akaja na Simoni Petro akaingia ndani ya kaburi. Following him and went into, went into the tomb and saw the linen clothes lying there. Akamtazama vitambaa vilivyolala. Now look at this. Angalia hapa. Verse 7. Sasa wa saba. And the handkerchief that had been around his head. Na ile lezo aliyokuwako kichwani pake. It was not lying with the linen clothes, but mm. had been folded, and was in a place by itself. Hai kuna la pamoja na vitamba, bali imezong imezongwa zongwa, bali mahali peke yake. And here's what I want you to know. That is a detail. Nataka tuelewe kidogo hii mafasilio. Now you know when I was growing up. Maybe you think you're going to go. We had a lot of eating customs that are different from yours. 
Sorry, you are not eating customs. You know, our dinner table, it was, it was almost a sacred place. Okay. Na, meza yetu ya chakula, ilikuwa inajaa na chakula vingi. So, I, I remember, you, you came home for dinner, and our family, we ate together. Na zali kama tulikuwa tulafaya, kama tulakunja nyumbani, familia mzima, tulikuwa tulakula chakula cha pamoja. And when we sat at the table, you know, if, if I was outside, I was a little kid, and I was playing, and I didn't have a shirt on, I had to put a shirt on to come to the table. Kama inafika kipindi chakula, kipindi alikuwa gali mdogo, kama nateza alimuja kwa mfano, hiko kifuwa wazi. Wakanyi wakukula ikifikia, wanamuita, anakuja kwanza, anafaa mguwa, hako wameenda kwenye meza. And if I had a hat on, Right. When you came to the, to, the, to the dinner table at my culture, you, you had to take your hat off. Now we would sit down, and the ushers would say, "Okay, now you have to come to the table." We sit down. 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 We sit Sometimes I know it. Come on, let's go. 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 Let's Looking for a fork and a fork. And she kind of looked up at me. She kind of with her mouth, she said, Mama, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the And I smiled big, right? And I said, it's right here, Mama. Mama, I said, it's right here, Mama. Mama, I said, it's right here, Mama. And I said, it's right here, Mama. In my life, I saw my mother eat with her hands. And I saw my mother eat with her hands. And I saw my mother eat with her hands. Oh, it was a great moment. I love it. You know, when we were finished eating when I was young, even still today, if, if, if we don't eat everything on our plate, we're, we're typically not allowed to leave, okay? That was the rule when I was younger. Kama unjamaliza chakula chako kwenye sahani yako, hawezi kutoka kwa meza. And my mother would say if I if I didn't eat everything on my plate, my mother would say, Mama alikuwa anasema kama sikumaliza chakula kwenye sahani langu, you need to eat everything. Mama aliambia inabidi umalize hiyo chakula yako. Because the people in Africa are starving. Sababu na huko Afrika kuna watu ambao wanateseka na njaa. And that's that's what she would say. Na hiyo ndio mama alikuwa ananiambia. Now I remember when I went to Africa I realized that not everybody in Africa is starving. But I remember my mother wanted me to eat everything because that would be thankful. But I remember my mother wanted me to eat everything because that would be thankful. But I remember my mother wanted me to eat everything because that would be thankful. But I remember my mother wanted me to eat everything because that would be thankful. But I remember my mother wanted me But it seemed like every time I ate everything on my plate, they would put more on my plate. And then I felt the need, I would have to eat all of that. And then I felt the need, I would have to eat all of that. And then I felt the need, I would have to eat all of that. And then I felt the need, I would have to eat all of that. Because when we eat everything on our plate, that means we are finished. But I know in a lot of cultures, when you eat everything, it means you're still hungry. That's a good thing. I feel it's in here. Come on, I'm going to eat all the other things. I'm going to eat all the other things. So I would eat everything. And they would give me more. And I would eat all of that. And they would give me more. And I would eat all of that. 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 And I would eat all
You know, when we finished eating, and my family and my culture, my father had an expectation for us. Mama, mama Before we could leave the table, we had to tell our mother thank you. And we enjoyed it. Mama, Amen. 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 If we did not tell her thank you, Kama mama, thank you. And we left the table. So ladies, I just want to stop for a minute, right? And I want to say, ladies, thank you for cooking and feeding us as men. You know, listen, men, we need to be thanking. We need to thank our women. We need to thank our moms, our, our wives. But you know, here's why I'm saying all of this, okay? These were some of the customs that I had in my culture. I want to bring this back to here for a minute. Mm -hmm. When the disciples went into the tomb, they saw the linen clothes that were not there. And they saw the handkerchief folded up. And they saw the handkerchief folded up. You know, here's what was happening. Jesus was going to die. Jesus was Jewish. And he was going to die. Jesus was Jewish. His followers were Jewish. His followers were Jewish. His followers were Jewish. When Jewish people would eat, when a man, uh, typically when they would eat, they had a servant there beside them. And when that man would eat, when he finished eating, and he was finished, he finished, eating and he was finished, he would take his napkin and he would throw it. He would throw it on the table and the servant knew that he could come and clean the table. But if a man was eating and he folded his handkerchief and he laid it on the table if he got up and went somewhere a handkerchief being folded meant he's coming back okay. The folded handkerchief meant I'm not finished yet. And the servant saw him and he saw the handkerchief he saw the handkerchief So when the servant saw the table, and the man was gone, when he saw the folded handkerchief
And when he saw, he believed. For they did not know the scriptures that he must be risen from the dead. Kwa maana hawajalifahamu bado andiko ya kwamba imempasa kufufuka. Amen. Amen. When Jesus rose from the dead. Kipindi yeye alipofufuka he was alive. He took the time he folded his handkerchief. And what this meant was this: I am not finished. I am not done. I'm 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 not done. i it means this that Jesus Christ is still doing his work. And he is not finished. Because he is working in you. And he is working in me. And he will come back. Amen. I want to go to 1 Corinthians for a minute. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 1. 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 Verse you know, in our church, and in the community, we have experienced a lot of death in the last several months, in the last couple of years. And we rejoice when those who have died have died in Christ. And let me just stop right there and say this. You know, brothers and sisters, you do not know when you will die. The question is, are you ready? And if you have not made a decision to put your faith in Jesus Christ, today is a great day. You made right with him. And I the reality is when we die and we die in Christ, it is then and only then do we go to heaven. And our bodies, what do we do? We lay them in the ground. Our bodies, we lay them in the ground. And our hope and our belief is this, that, you know, one day when I die, I'm going to see that one that I love in heaven. I want to see that one that I love in heaven. Amen. 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 It gets better. Verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first of those who have fallen asleep. Lakini sasa Kristo amefufuka katika wafu limbuko lao waliolala. Now I don't know what your translation reads, but mine says fallen asleep. Is that, is that how the Swahili reads, fallen asleep? You know, so here's the thing. I want you to think about it. You know, there's a difference between falling asleep and dying. Would you agree? Yeah. 
You know, when somebody dies, it's, it, that, that's it, that's the end, right? But you know, every night you're going to go to bed, you're going to do what? You're going to fall asleep. Now, how many of you have ever been in a house where you slept and you woke up and you were like, oh, I'm going to die. How many of us would say, you know what, we are afraid of dying? Okay? Now, that's not true. And most people would say, yeah, I don't know what to do. But if I ask you, are you afraid of falling asleep? Most of us would say, yeah, but I don't know what to do. But if I ask you, are you afraid of falling asleep? Most of us would say, yeah, but I don't know what to do. But if I ask you, are you afraid of falling asleep? Most of us would say, yeah, but I don't know what to do. But if I ask you, are But we're not afraid of falling asleep. I want you to know the Bible mentions death like this. To those who have fallen asleep. Now listen to this. Verse 21. For since by man mm -hmm. came death. Mm -hmm. By man also came the resurrection of the dead. Maana ya kuwa mauti ililetwa na mtu, kadhalika na kiyama ya watu ililetwa na mtu. Verse 22. Vende. For as in Adam all died. Kwa kuwa kama katika Adamu wote wanakufa. Do you remember Adam and Eve? Tunakumbuka Adamu na Hawa, si ndio? You know, children sometimes they come to me and they ask, Pastor, why do we die? Why do people die? And, and here's why we die because when Adam and Eve sin, you know, what you and I have to realize is that when Adam and Eve were created, they were created to live forever. <laughs> But when they sin, death came. We die because of sin. Do you remember the Bible says that Adam and Eve were created to live forever? And when they sin, death came. For as in Adam all die. Adam and Eve all die. Adam and Eve all die. But even so in Christ. All shall be made alive. Now, in the end, so what do I do? Who for the end? So what I'm going to do? What then? Everybody say amen. Say amen. Here's the difference. What do you do for me? The Bible mentions two words here. Biblia para sa mga dito na wili. It mentions death. Ina manisha kifo. And it mentions na ina manisha kula o sigis. There's a difference. Do you see the difference? Here's the difference. That if you are outside of Christ, if you have not come to Jesus Christ, you are still under sin. And what the Bible says is that in that you Meaning you die, it's done, it's over. But when we come to Jesus, even though we die, we really just sleep. We die. Do you understand Verse 24. Then the, the end will come. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Then the end will come. Verse 24. He will give the kingdom to God the Father. He puts an end to all rule and authority and power. Verse 25. 
He must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. Verse 26. Versus. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Pastor Bill, what's the difference? Here's the difference. When you're dead, you're dead. When you're dead, you're dead. Kama una kufa, una kufa. But when you sleep, you wake up. La kama una lala, una amuka. Doto fa uti. Brothers and sisters, here's our hope. Hapo kuna matumaini kwa wale wadiyo lala. That even though we die, hata kama tuna jua tuna kufa. When we die in Christ, na kama tuna kufa ndani ya Yesu. There will be a day. Kuna siku. When Jesus has defeated death, and we will be raised from the dead. Amen. 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 In other words, the loved ones who have died in Christ. Yes, one day we will see them in heaven. There will be a day. When they will raise from the dead. And we will see them again. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, when we think of death, the Bible describes it like this. That you have not died. You just fall asleep. But like Jesus said to Lazarus, I will come and I'm going to wake them up. Amen? Amen. And you know what my prayer today is? For those who are dead, for those who are not in Christ, that today, Leo, Jesus would wake you up Yesu, to the power Kwazile, of the resurrection. <laughs> Some of us, we are living in sin. We live our lives in sin. And we know sin brings death. And it is my prayer. That Jesus Christ open your eyes. And he say to you, Get up. 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 Get I want you to stop doing the things that bring death. And come with me. And I will give you life. I won't just give you life in heaven. I'll give you life on earth. And one day. I will resurrect you. For I have defeated. The powers. Of sin. And death. You know, brothers and sisters, this is why we celebrate Easter. Here's what I want to ask. What does the resurrection mean to you? Je, kufufuko, au resurrection ina manisha nini kwako? You know what it means to me? Unajua mimi kufufuko na manisha nini kwako? When I find myself in sin, kama najikuta kwenye zangu, when I find myself struggling, it means that I can go to Christ. And I can call upon Him. And find a power that defeats my sin. And gives me a reason to live. And brothers and sisters, I want to beg you. Let's stop. Doing the things that lead to death. Let's live in the power of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. You know, this morning, 
We're going to pray. Leo asubuhi tutaenda kuomba. I want to ask you. Nitaomba. Are you dead? Je, utajiuliza peke yako? Je, niko mwenye kufa? Are you alive? Au ninaishi ndani ya Yesu? Are you dead in sin? Je, unakufa ndani ya dhambi? Are you willing to let Christ wake you up? Au unapenda Yesu Kristo akuamushe? And follow him. Na kumfuata in life. Ufuate ndani ya maisha yako. One day. Ili siku moja receive the resurrection. Upokee ufufuo dead. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, if you have never asked Jesus Christ ndugu na dada kama bado hujawahi kuona Yesu Kristo kuoku kusabeza bizako na aje aishi ndani ya moyo wako nataka nikwambie leo na tuna mwokozi is knocking on your door sasa anagonga hodi anadisha hodi kwenye mlango wako and the bible says anyone who lets me in i will live and i will live kwa kila mmoja baada ya kufungulia mlango nitaingia na nitaishi kwake. Amen. Amen. I want to pray with you. Nataka tuombe kwa moyo. And if you have never asked Jesus Christ to pray to, to come and live inside of you, you can pray you can pray like this and ask this, ask Jesus to come and live. Kama bado ulikuwa hujaishi maisha ya kuomba Mungu au Yesu akujaishi ndani ya maisha yako, nitakuomba utaomba namna hii. Jesus, I am a sinner. Yesu, mimi ni mwenye dhambi. I have failed you. Nimekukosea. And I have sinned Nime, so much. Nimefanya dhambi nyingi. But I believe. Lakini naamini. That you died on the cross for me. Ulikufa msalabani kwa ajili yangu. I am coming to you. Ninakuita leo. A sinner. Mimi mpoja mimi mpenda dhambi. And I believe you will forgive me. Naamini kama utanisamehe. But I believe Lord you want to raise me out of my sin. Ninaamini kama unataka kunifufua kutoka katika dhambi zangu. And I'm not just coming today to receive forgiveness. Mimi sikuti tu kwa kunipokea msamaha. I want to receive life. Na kuja ili pokee maisha. Help me Lord. Nisaidie. To live in the power of the Lord. Ili katika ufufuo za ufufuo. I laid out my sin. Nimetoa maisha yako na dhambi zangu. Ready to take up your life. Ili niko tayari ili nipokee maisha yako. Father we thank you. Baba tunakushukuru. Thank you for the resurrection. Asubuhi ya leo kwa ajili ya ufufuo. Thank you for the power of the resurrection. Tunashukuru sababu ya nguvu za ufufuo. That is power for when we live And it is power for when we die. Tunajua kama kuna nguvu kibidi tunaishi na kuna nguvu pia kibidi tunapofurika. Rejoice this morning. Na ndiko na furaha siku ya leo. Jesus Christ. Sababu Yesu Kristo has defeated. Alishinda kifo. Power of sin and death. Na alishinda nguvu za mauti. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. 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 Kama unajifikia huko mwenye dhambi, unaweza kuja uongee na sisi tutakuombea. Tutakusaidia kukua kiimani. Sababu Inabidi ujue kama Yesu Kristo atakuombea Na atanipatia maisha ya mpya. Amen. Amen. Acha tuombe. Baba katika baraka la mwokozi wa maisha yetu. Tunatambua kama sisi ni watenda zambi. Tunatambua kama tunakukosa Bwana katika njia nyingi. Tunakukosa katika kufikiri, tunafikiri mabaya. Katika kunena maneno mabaya na katika vitendo tunatenda maneno vitendo vitivyo kufurahisha. Tunatambua baba sisi ni watenda zambi mfano wa mali. Na tutaki tuishi maisha kama vile wafu sababu tunaweza kuwa tuko wazima na kumi tumekufa lakini tunataka tuishi pamoja na wewe sababu tunajua wewe una nguvu za ufufuo wewe ulishinda mauti na ukakufuka tena na tunataka zile nguvu za ufufuo bwana zizidi kuishi ndani yetu mfano wa mali o baba utusameza nizetu tunajua kama wewe peke yako uliacha uhungu huko mbinguni uliacha kitu chako cha enzi ukakubali kuja kufa msalabani kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu ukateswa ukapigwa ukapigwa mawe wakakutemea mate ukachomwa mkuki wakakupiga taji la mimba wakakupiga misumari wakakudusi na hata nguo zako zikapigiwa kura sababu usitupate ondoleo la dhambi na kisha hayo yote bwana walikuchukua hata kwenye kaburi ulikufa 
na baada ya siku tatu ilikuwa siku kama ya leo siku ya Jumapili ukafufuka kutoka katika wafu na sisi ambao tunakutumaidia Bwana tulipata matumaini kama Yesu alishinda kifo na sisi pia tukiishi ndani ya Yesu tutakuwa na uzima wa milele Asante Bwana sababu umeleta uzima kwetu na wale wote hapo hawajatoa maisha yao kwa ajili ya kutumikia baba wakaribishe wapatie mioyo ya unyenyekevu ili wakutague kama wewe ni Mungu ambaye ulikuja kufa msalabani kwa ajili yetu ili sisi sote tupate uzima wa milele ili sisi sote tupate ondoleo la dhambi Asante Bwana kwa kwa wale Mungu haujawahi kuacha walio wako haujawahi kututupa na najua kama maombi yetu bwana utayapokea na wale wote ambao hawajajua nguvu za ukufuo wale wote ambao hawajajua kama wanaweza kuwa wanaishi lakini wamekufa zamani sababu za dhambi zao baba uweke moyo wako ndani yao na uwaamushe uwaamushe fikira zao ili watoe maisha yao kwako ili siku moja wapate uzima wa milele waishi tena wao wenye kulala kuliko ya kuwa wamekufa sababu tunajua mtu wa kifa anakufa na kuisha na mtu wa kilala analala na siku moja anakaanga na sisi tunapenda tulale kama nilivyosema katika kitabu cha Wasaloniki wa kwanza sura ya 4 mstari wa 17 wale wote walio lala ndani ya Yesu watafufuliwa tena na sisi pia tunataka tufufuliwe siku hiyo utakapokuja na mgurumo wa malaika mkubwa hali pamoja na malaika wako wakuu wakija bwana kuhukumu dunia na sisi pia tunataka kutufuliwa pamoja bwana Asante Yesu kwa kuwa ni mwema. Asante kwa kusikia maombi yetu. Asante kwa kusema kwa kusamehe dhambi zetu. Asante kwa kukubali kuja kufa msalabani kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. Na tuna matumaini kama siku ya leo umeshinda kifo, leo umefufuka, na ni siku yetu ya kusherekea. Sio hapa kanisani tu, hata kutoka kwa nyumbani tutasherekea sababu tunajua tuna ushindi ndani ya Yesu Kristo. Tunakwenda kuomba machache yale katika jina la Yesu. Ni Kristo bwana mwokozi. Amen. Amen.